In just a short time from now, a high school football player seen here who allegedly admitting to murdering a pregnant cheerleader will be arraigned in Indiana. The details of the murder are horrifying. 17-year-old Brianna Rusling was reported missing by her family around midnight on Saturday. Police later found the teen's body in a dumpster. It's hard to lose somebody, when, especially when they're that young and they get murdered like that. I mean, there's no excuse whatsoever for any of that to happen. The thing is that uh, most of us are fathers, and any senseless death is, is very upsetting. But when you're talking about young people, it is more so. 16-year-old Aaron Trejo was charged yesterday with killing Brianna Rusling and her unborn baby. Court documents say Trejo was the father of the unborn child. And he was thinking about killing Brianna and the baby for about a week. He was allegedly upset that he was told about the pregnancy too late for her to consider having an abortion. According to the affidavit, he said, quote, I took action, I took her life. Joining me now, host of Law and Crime, former prosecutor Bob Bianchi. Bob, this is horrible, and he believed this was his only way out and admits that he thought it out, used the knife. To me, this says, of course, premeditated. Yeah, you don't get much more premeditated than this. I mean, he gave a very cogent confession where he indicates he had been contemplating killing her for a week. He then takes a knife and a plastic bag, which clearly shows he was intending on disposing the body. He sets her up by meeting at a, a location, kills her, dumps the body in a dumpster, takes her cell phone and I think some other personal items and throws them in a lake. Uh, this is about as premeditated, Susan, as you can get. Mm -hmm. Would you base it on his age that he is allegedly uh, being so forthcoming, meaning saying his entire plan uh, to those questioning him? Well, I've been doing homicide work for most of my career, most of which was a, as a prosecutor. People speak for all sorts of reasons. I don't find that juveniles are any more inclined to speak or not speak than other people. And I don't think that an individual like this should be tried as a juvenile, should be tried as an adult yeah, based upon question. the heinous nature. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you have to understand, prosecutors look at the quality of the crime. How much premeditation was there? Here, there was a copious amount of premeditation. Mm -hmm. How vicious was the killing? Now, he didn't only just stab her multiple times. He strangled her to a point with a scarf that the ME, the medical examiner, indicated that she would have died of strangulation had she not thereafter been stabbed. And, and he then, even of course, said he hiding. wanted it to be quick. That's why he used a knife. He even, in his own mind, thought he was sparing her. Well, I don't, I don't buy that, Susan, because he strangled her with a scarf prior to stabbing her, and that is, and she was almost dead at that point in time, according to the medical examiner, wow. when he stabbed her, and that is a really up close and personal kind of vicious crime. So this has got all the kind. You could just imagine what that poor young lady was going through as mm -hmm. her life was ebbing away as he was strangling her. And six months pregnant. In the next hour, Bob, he will be arraigned. Uh, what goes on there? What can we expect from that court appearance? I'm expecting him to be there, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very basic appearance. He's going to enter a plea of not guilty. Bail will be discussed. And the next important stage of this, Susan, is the prosecutor's decision to waive him up as an adult, which ultimately is going to need the Indiana state court's approval to do that. And there are a number of factors under Indiana law. They're pretty basic, and I don't see any basis upon which this case will not, in fact, be moved up, and he will, in fact, be tried as an adult. That's the real legal issue in this case. In your experience, there's no real case that's open and shut. You want to investigate thoroughly to make sure justice is served. Well, I was a tenacious prosecutor, so I, I've had some very good cases that came across my way. But what I really look at in a case like this are the defenses. So you want to anticipate where will the defense go with this? Will they you try to use passion provocation? Will they try to use some sort of defense to say that he wasn't in his right mind? So I'm going to keep digging. I'm going to do a victimology mm -hmm. history, a defendant history. I'm going to speak to experts right now. And I'm going to try to make sure that with all my team and my staff, I can block off any potential defense so that I can be successful at trial. Just such a young girl and so devastating all around. Bob, thank you.